Hi there, this is Dr. John Whitcomb talking about, for news and nutrition, about autism may be a plasmalogen deficiency disease. Well, first of all, what are plasmalogens? They are phospholipids that make up 70% of the synapses and axons in your brain. And they are critical. We couldn't have a brain or a central nervous system without them. They are critical lipids that are manufactured in your peroxisome in your cells. And they have a few key features, but the most, probably the most important one, I think, is that they're incredibly liquid, which allows the proteins embedded in your brain to operate very rapidly so that we can sense the world around us. Okay, that's one key idea. Uh, the problem is, is we make them with a little bit of, or a little bit on a vulnerable spot on how we make them. Newborn infants or infants, neonates, fetuses, don't make any until about week 30. They get all of it from mom. But then as their brains are exploding and they're born, the richest source of plasmalogens are in mother's milk. Interesting. So breastfeeding dramatically delivers plasmalogens to the newborn baby whose brain is just growing exponentially. All right, if you want to find out what happens if you breastfeed, what happens to your risk of autism, Google it and look it up. The more you breastfeed, the less autism you have. Plain and simple, which suggests the more plasmalogens you get, the less autism you have. But in the last hundred years, the popularity of breastfeeding has been up and down and is dramatically reduced in America, where everybody drinks formula, where every child, many children get formula so that mom can get back to work. But what are the other threads that might support this? Do you know that if you take mice and completely deprive them of plasmalogens in vivo, they have abnormal behaviors and MRI scans that look very similar to human MRI scans in autistic kids. Do you know if you take autistic kids and look at their the white matter of their brain, you can see abnormalities on their white matter that is quite different than normal children. And the severity of those abnormalities correlate quite closely with their autistic features. Okay. That's just interesting threads. And then we have anecdotes from many, many people who've now already given plasmalogen supplements to their autistic children and had fairly dramatic increases in function in just a couple weeks. This is really interesting. Why haven't we not had a randomized placebo-controlled trial? Well, first of all, prodrome glia only costs some hundred dollars a month for a single dose. And actually, if I had a child with autism, what would I be doing? I'd be giving a bottle of that supplement every week for the first two months, and which would be like eight pills a day, and cut down to a quarter of that dose over the course of a couple months once things had stabilized. But my hunch is, if you have a child with autism, you'll see such improvement. You'll say this is the cheapest supplement you ever purchased, and you'll be thrilled. I think a randomized placebo-controlled trial needs to be done. Uh, I would be all in support of it. I would join in with anybody supporting them to help them. But I am going to start suggesting parents that when you have a supplement that has no toxicity, is simply a vital food, has no side effects, is not in any way dangerous, has never harmed anybody. I think it's compelling to say we need to spread the word a little more aggressively, which is why I'm making this posting. So if you want to contact me in my office, we'll be happy to talk to you about it. We are enthusiastic about this. I think Diane Goodnow, the inventor of Prodrome, the company Prodrome and the person who's figured out the biochemistry of how to get it into you deserves nothing but the highest praise. This is Dr. John Whitcomb for News and Nutrition. Autism may be a plasmalogen deficiency disease, and we can fix it.